Well, I'd like to welcome you to the final message in the series that we've been taking a look at called Finding Calm in the Chaos. And last week, I kind of did a review and a rundown of the first messages in this series. And just by way of a reminder, in case you haven't listened to these messages, they're all available on our website and our YouTube channel. And you can go there. You can even go to our website and download uh, sermon outlines for these. But we started this message series of finding calm in the chaos with a message of encouragement. Then we looked at a message that, that dealt with wisdom and having wisdom in these uncertain times. The third message was on trust. And then last week, we looked at perspective. Today, I want to close this series of five messages with a message that if I were to give it one word, it would be a message on faith. A message on faith. Now, if you're taking notes on this uh, sermon, or if you're, you've got one of our downloadable uh, sermon outline sheets, or even if you're just doing this in your imagination, I would like you to picture a or draw a, a uh, path that is a very straight path, or just kind of picture that in your mind. And this path is kind of just, it's, it's just a straight path and you can walk on that path and you can see where you're going and it goes as far as you can possibly see. Now to the left of that path, now we're gonna call that path faith. That is the path of faith that we're all called to walk because the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith or trust in God, not in what we can see all the time. Now to the left of that path, if you're, if you're drawing or making that note, I want you to picture a path or draw a path that at the beginning of it, it's right beside the path of faith, but this path to the left of faith I want you to draw to where the longer the path goes, the further away from faith it gets. So you've got a path of faith going straight like this, and then you've got a path over here that starts looking like it's going parallel, but then all of a sudden turns and goes far to the left. We could label that path fear. Now, if you will bear with me just one more time, to the right of that, make a very similar path where you start out and it looks very parallel to faith, except the more the path goes on, the wider it gets away from faith. Now, I want you to put that vis uh, that visual in your mind because right in the middle is that path of faith that we're all called to walk, and we're gonna apply this to some things that we're going through today, but there's that path of faith that we're to walk where we are trusting in God and we're trusting in God's word regardless of what we see. Now to the left of that, that path that kind of looked like faith but then got really wide, we could label that fear. And obviously, if we're in the midst of a pandemic and our lives are just filled with fear, uh, we are not living God's best for our lives. But then on the other side, of that path of faith that goes too wide the other way is a path that we could call foolishness. And you see, we are called to walk somewhere between fear and foolishness on the, this path that is called faith. Now let me give you two examples, one example from the Bible and a second example from what you're living in and what I'm living in as we're living through a pandemic that is called COVID-19. First of all, biblical example. Jesus told his disciples in Mark chapter 16, verse 18, and he says this about believers. He says this about people that will follow him. He says that they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a promise that I have yet to put into practice. So Jesus basically is saying here, it's a promise of protection. Jesus is saying, you're going to go out there, there's going to be dangers, and I'm going to protect you. So on one hand, fear would say, I'm not going to go out, I'm not going to preach, I'm not going to say anything about Jesus because I'm afraid, but the other path would be to take this 
literally. Now, in the Bible, in the book of Acts, we have a story where Paul the Apostle is gathering firewood during one of his missionary journeys. And he's out preaching the gospel, and as he's gathering wood from a fire, the Bible tells us that a, that a snake, a viper, a serpent, attached itself to his hand. And it says that Paul shook that, that, that serpent off into the fire. Now, what happened there was that all these island people who knew what kind of snake that was believed that Paul had done something wrong, so they were all waiting for him to die. When he didn't die, then they did a complete 180 and believed that he was a god. Now, I say that to say this. Paul wasn't looking for trouble. Paul wasn't looking for serpents. He wasn't looking for any of that, but it found him, and Jesus' promise came true in his life. But how many of you have heard stories about different churches in different places that literally practice the handling of snakes? They take this promise and they, they practice it to its most literal conclusion. And probably not surprising, uh, many of them, because they get bit by the snake, they either get very, very sick or they die. You see, that's the path of foolishness. Now, let me apply this to what we're going through today because remember, we're called to walk by faith, not walk by fear, not walk by foolishness, but walk by faith. And as we're in this, this uh, pandemic, uh, chances are you know people that are on that path of fear. In fact, I've heard of people that literally are paralyzed with fear because of COVID-19. And I'll say it again, that if we're paralyzed with fear, we are not living God's best for our lives because his desire is that we would not live in fear, but live by faith. But on the opposite end of the spectrum is during this COVID pandemic, there have been others who have just thrown all caution to the wind. In fact, I've heard of two churches, at least two churches, where they said, we're not going to listen to any of these guidelines. We're just going to continue on as normal. And in two cases that I know of, pastors have died from COVID-19 for not closing. So, uh, so there are these two wide, these paths that go wide of faith. How do we walk by faith and not by sight? How do we walk somewhere between fear on one hand and foolishness on the other? I want you to look with me, if you will, to Psalm 91. And I, we're going to look at verses 11 to 16. I'm going to read these verses and then I want to share with you three realities for today's message. This is a promise of God from Psalm 91. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, I just read about half of Psalm 91 and and Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm. In other words, it's a song that was sung over and over again about God's protection. And the first thing, and again, I only read part of it, but enough to, for us to kind of kind of get, get our minds around this. And the first reality based on this psalm is that we can trust God for his protection. We can trust God for his protection protection. And that's what to walk that line by faith means. It means that we're walking, that we don't know everything, we can't see everything, but we're trusting God for his protection. Now in verses 14 to 16, there are eight promises of God. 
where God says this. God either says, I will do this, or it is implied. In fact, six times the words, the phrase, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, is said, and there are two additional times that it is implied. Now, I want to read this, these verses to you again, and I want you just to listen to God speaking through his word, because this promise, these promises, if we go back to to, uh, verse one of Psalm 91, he is speaking about the person who dwells in the shelter of the Almighty. In other words, these promises are for anyone who puts their trust in God. Now listen to these again, as I read them again, what God says he'll do. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Eight separate precious promises of God. And if you didn't get them, here they are again real quick. God says, I will deliver him. I will protect him. I will answer him. I will be with him. I will rescue him. I will honor him. I will satisfy him. And then finally, I will save him. So this first reality is that we can trust in God's promises, that we can trust in God's protection. Now, as I read these in Psalm 91, I want you to ask yourself, do any of these stand out at you at the moment? I'm going to read them again really quickly, but I want you to pay attention to them and and just sort of pay attention to your own spirit and see, is, is there one of these eight promises, these eight things that God says that, that maybe is standing out to you a little bit higher Uh, or a little bit louder, or a little bit bolder than the rest. And maybe that's a a promise of God. Maybe that's something God is saying through his word that you need to hold on to. Again, God says, I will deliver him. I will protect him. I will answer him. I will be with him. I will rescue him. I will honor him. I will satisfy him, and finally, I will save him. And obviously, um, I just realized as I was reading these, I I, I read them from the text that that speaks about him, but obviously, if you're a her here this morning, if you're a her listening to this, these apply just as much to you. So the first reality that we gotta hold on to, if we're gonna walk this walk of faith, not, not being given over to fear, is that we can trust God for protection. That we can trust God for protection. Secondly, that we can walk by faith rather than fear. In other words, we can walk on that that place between fear and foolishness. We can walk by faith rather than fear. So because God is who he says he is, And because God will do what he says he will do, we can choose to walk by faith and rather than fear. And notice those words that we can choose to walk by faith rather than fear. In other words, to walk by faith, it's not an emotion. It's emotion. It's a decision we make. It's a choice we make. It's a will decision that we make where when fear tries to come upon us, we go to the word of God, we trust in the promises of God, and we say, I will not fear because God says, I will do this. I will deliver him. I will keep her safe. Now, what's interesting about this psalm, and again, this is a precious psalm that God's, that promises God's protection, where God says these eight times, I'll do this, I'll do this, and then finally I'll save him. Now, what's interesting about this uh, Psalm 91 is we don't know who the author is. Now, many of the Psalms come from uh, King David, 
And then there are some other psalms that are named, but this is an unnamed psalm. Now, the Jewish tradition says that it was Moses that wrote this psalm and just kind of preserved over the years. Um, other traditions say that it was King David. In fact, the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament that was printed and, and put together around 200 years before Jesus' birth, the Septuagint uh, uh, attributes this psalm to King David. So having said that, we don't know who wrote it. It could be Moses and it could be David. Why is that important? It's important for this reason. Both Moses and David were, were men and, and whoever, whichever one of them wrote this psalm of putting trust and believing in God and walking by faith in God's protection, both Moses and David had times in their lives where they were given into fear, where there were fearful moments in their lives. And just like David and just like Moses, there are times in our lives where we get fearful. Here's, da here's one of David's prayer. This was a prayer that David prayed. Now remember, if David wrote Psalm 91, this is an incredible promise of God's protection but David was also very much afraid at times. And in fact, in Psalm 56, verses three and four, this is a prayer of David when he was seized by his enemies, the Philistines. And he says these words, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Notice David didn't say, now, now if I get afraid, as if you know it might not happen, or it might happen, it might not happen. David said, when I am afraid. This was a man who knew what it was like to fear. And I hope that if you, during this pandemic or whatever may, else may be going on in your life, maybe you, you've said, you could honestly say to me this morning, Pastor Tim, I, I really have been walking that, that path of fear. I know that I should walk by faith, but I've really been on this path of fear more than I would like to admit. You're in good company. David was fearful and he said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. And then he says these words, I shall not be afraid. You notice how David says that when I'm fearful, so he acknowledged that there were times where he was walking that path of fear rather than faith, but he makes a declaration that I shall not be afraid. Because to walk by faith and not by fear is not an emotion that we feel, it is a motion that we make and then the emotions follow the motion. So in other words, maybe we're filled with fear and may, maybe there's stuff about this pandemic that just could cause us to be paralyzed if we thought about it too much. Uh, or maybe there's other areas in our lives where we say, you know, I gotta be honest, I've been walking on that path of fear. Make that choice, make that motion, make that de declaration to trust in God, to trust in God's promises for protection and say these words, I shall not be afraid. Now, you've probably done something like this in your life at one time. And I would love to be able to tell you uh, that as soon as you say those words, I shall not be afraid, that all those emotions of fear would just fall by the wayside. Sometimes that does happen, but many times what happens is this. We're in a situation, we're, we're, we're dealing with fear, we read the scripture, we decide to make that motion, we decide to make that decision to not be afraid, to walk by faith. So we make that motion and say, I will not be afraid, but sometimes those emotions of fear are still there. But the more we begin to walk the path of faith, reminding ourselves like David did, I shall not be afraid, I will put my trust in you. The more we do that, the more those emotions of fear will fall off. Why is that? Because emotions follow motion. Emotions follow motion. And you know what, maybe you're, you're listening to this message and some of us listening to this message, we need to do what David did. And in Psalm 56, 
three and four, David names his fear. He recognizes that he has fear. And then he, he makes a motion, a decision, a choice to trust in God. Maybe some of us during this pandemic need to, to write out Psalm 56, three and four, or we need to write out all of, all of or part of Psalm 91 of God's protection so that we can get off of this path of emotions and fear and begin to walk by faith. And again, just like I said before, doesn't mean that, that, that those emotions of fear will immediately fall away. Praise God if they do. But the more we begin to walk by faith, the more the emotions of faith start to follow it. So I hope that's helpful. So the good news is we don't have to stay on that path. We can walk by faith rather than fear. But then the third reality is just the opposite of that. And that is that we can walk by faith rather than foolishness. Because remember, we're called to walk by faith. We're called to walk on that straight, narrow path, not going too far to the left into fear and being led by our emotions, not be going too far to the right and going into areas of foolishness. So we could say that, that fear and foolishness are to the left and right of faith. Now, fear leads to paralysis. Fear leads to paralysis and keeps us from faith, but foolishness leads to presumption and also keeps us from faith. Now, it's important to see that, it's critical to see that this, these promises of Psalm 91 are quoted in the New Testament. And you're probably, if, if you don't know, already know this, this is gonna come as a surprise. But these are the very scriptures that the enemy used in the desert to try to tempt Jesus. And you remember that it, it's the second temptation in Luke's gospel. It's the third temptation in Matthew's gospel. And again, the order isn't that important. They, they have their order in the different gospels for theological emphasis. But this one temptation, he, Satan says to Jesus, I want you... Go to the pinnacle. He showed him the pinnacle of the temple. This was, this was the highest peak on the Temple Mount. In fact, one ancient Jewish historian said that you could not go to the top of this and look down without getting dizzy. And the enemy took our Savior up there and, and said, throw yourself down. And then he said, he quoted these verses to him and said, you can do that, Jesus, because God has promised that he will keep you in all of your ways. And he has promised that you will not even dash your foot against the stone. But the important thing that we need to remember from Matthew chapter four and Luke chapter four, uh, Luke chapter four is that Jesus didn't jump. In other words, Jesus refused to go over into this area of foolishness and throw himself from the Temple Mount as, was, as he was tempted to do by the enemy. So to walk by faith, to walk that middle path, that means we trust, we put our trust in the promises of God to feed us. So in other words, if we're gonna trust God, if we're gonna get off that path of fear, then we need the promises of God and we just need to feed ourselves upon these promises feed ourselves upon the, God, the word of God, but we also need the spirit of God to lead us. The promises of God to feed us, the spirit of God to lead us. Now in the, in the Bible, in Numbers chapter 14, you can read this as a follow-up to this message. There's a great story in Numbers chapter 14 that includes fear, faith, and foolishness. And God had, you remember that the 12 spies were sent into the land of Canaan and only two of the, of the 12 came back with a positive report. Only two came back on that path of faith. 10 of those spies that came back were on the path of fear. And those 10, those 10 spies that came back full of fear said, we can't do this. 
God is not in it. We're, you know, our enemies are so much bigger than we are. And as a result of these 10 not walking by faith, God said that only Joshua and Caleb, the two men that walked by faith, would enter the promised land. Well, what happened was all these that had once given in to fear, now they decided, you know what? I think we will go up and take the promised land. And Moses said to them, sorry, essentially what he was saying was that door has closed. That bus has left the station. He said, don't go up because if you go up, you're going up presumptuously and the Lord your God is not with you. And what happens is they get the people together. They get themselves ready for war. But when they go to go into the promised land, they're defeated by their enemies. And it's important for us to see this. God was saying, go in, take the land. They could have done it had they walked the path of faith. Instead, they chose fear. And then for, they went, they, they, I mean, talk about swing the pendulum. They went from walking in fear, saying we can't do this, to walking in foolishness and being shown that they couldn't do this. So we're walking this passive path of faith, not fear on the left, not foolishness on the right. And I believe that Psalm 91 contains a beautiful truth, a beautiful nugget that will keep us, what is kind of like, what is the thing that will keep us from being paralyzed by fear? What is the thing that will keep us from, from being um, presumptuous and doing foolish things in the name of faith? In verse 14, God says these words, because right in the midst of, remember those eight promises, those eight I will do this that God says, right in the midst of all of these are these words. Because he, or again, because she holds fast to me in love. You see, we walk by faith and not by sight, not by focusing on faith, not by, not by focusing on faith and trying to walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by fear or not by foolishness, by holding fast to the Lord our God, by clinging to Jesus. In fact, these words, hold fast to me in love, are this, they're this Hebrew verb, which to, to hold fast is an excellent translation, but it carries this idea of clinging to someone, even burning for someone. So, so God is saying, you, you know, He's describing somebody that is holding fast to him and clinging to him and burning for him. And really, when, when our hearts are like that to, towards the Lord, that is the place to be in. That is the place that will keep us and will enable us to walk by faith. Because it's much like riding a bicycle. You know, you don't, you don't get in a bi on a bicycle and ride a bicycle thinking, I can't fall off, I can't fall off, I can't fall off. You get on a bicycle and you just go with it. And the same thing with walking by faith. The more that we just love Jesus, cling to Jesus, hold fast to Jesus, the more we'll begin to, to, to see ourselves walking in that center path of faith, not giving into fear on one hand or foolishness on the other. So I wanna ask you this question today because really on this message of faith, this is where it comes down to are you, am I holding fast, clinging to, burning for Jesus? No matter what's going on in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of other stuff going on in our lives that would try to put fear in our hearts, are we clinging and burning for Jesus? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you would begin to stir our hearts I pray, Lord God, that you would put within the hearts of your people a burning for you, Lord God, a burning for you, Lord God. Forgive us for other priorities, Lord God, that we've placed before you. Uh, forgive us, Lord God, for what the Bible would call idols of things that are before you. And God, I pray that you would just give us a heart to cling to you, to desire you, um, to go after you, Lord and Lord, we thank you that as we do that and just, just follow you in this love relationship, then we can walk by faith and not be overcome with fear and not go off the path into foolishness. May we hear what you're saying to us today. In Jesus' name.
Amen. I pray that not only today's message on faith, but I pray that these five messages in this series, Finding Calm in the Chaos, have been an encouragement to you. And again, if you haven't seen all of these messages or listened to them, you can go back either on our webpage or our church app or our YouTube channel. We would love for you to, to like, our, like our, um, and subscribe to our page. God bless you. And I wanna invite you to stand as together we close this virtual service with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.